When I was a little boy learning how to worship, I would sit with my mother and my sisters on the pew toward the front in the sanctuary of First Presbyterian Church, no, Beacon Hill Presbyterian Church of San Antonio, Texas. That was in the old days before congregations thought they had to provide a special children's church for elementary school aged children. The notion back then was that the best way to learn to worship is to worship. It's an old idea, but still I think it's a pretty good one. This is not to say that my mother made no provisions for us children. We were allowed to draw and to a certain extent to, to fidget. Even as my father was preaching, we were allowed to reach into the pew rack and pull out a pew pencil and draw some interpretation of the scripture lesson, so long as we did not use the offering envelopes as our canvas. I can still remember those pencils. They were given as a, as a gift by the local funeral home. They were white with blue lettering. On the eraser end was a picture of a family, father, son, daughter, mother, entering a church with a great tall steeple and lettered on the barrel were these words, the family that prays together stays together, colon, church-going children seldom become delinquent. <laughs> Back then, the great threat to Christian folk was threefold, communism, divorce, and juvenile delinquency. I wasn't sure what any of those were, but I was sure I didn't want to have anything to do with them. Juvenile delinquency sounded especially scary. It was akin to polio or German measles, I was sure. I didn't know, but I knew I didn't want to catch it. Thank God for church, which provided a reliable inoculation. The pencil tells me so. How startling then to hear these words of Jesus from Luke's gospel. Do you think I have come to bring peace on the earth? I tell you no, but rather division. From now on there will be five in one household, divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, daughter against mother and mother against daughter mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Surely the gospel writer has made some mistake. These are not the words of Jesus, but of some communist agitator, some nefarious opponent of family values who wants children to grow up to be juvenile delinquents. Is it not Jesus who tells that heartwarming story of the prodigal son who returns from a far off country and his father greets him in the road, waiting for him, patient, ready to forgive. Picture the old man running down the robe, his robe hiked up to his knees, his bony knees knocking together, his, his, his liver spotted arms reaching out to bear hug the ragged rascal. Surely Jesus is the, the agent of reconciliation in families. Mother and daughter, mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. Luke must have it completely wrong, either that or we have caught Jesus on a very bad day. But careful readers and listeners to Luke's gospel should have seen this coming. True, the night that Jesus was born, the angels sang, glory to God, peace on earth among people. But remember what Simeon said to Mary when she and Joseph presented their baby to the temple. 
This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed. And to Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul too. That sword pierced right to Mary's heart the time that she and her sons went and tried to get Jesus to come out of a crowded home to have a family conference. Your mother and your brothers are asking for you outside, wanting to see you, Jesus is told. And Jesus responds, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. We, we should have seen this coming. From the very beginning, the peace that Jesus brings is not the peace, our own, peace on our own terms that you and I seek for ourselves and our families. It's the peace that comes from following Jesus and leaning toward that kingdom which he is bringing in. The peace that Jesus brings is kingdom peace not the perpetuation of existing structures and institutions, no matter how long-standing and beloved. If the temple should stand in the way of the kingdom, let the temple be torn down stone by stone. If the empire should stand in the way of the kingdom, let Caesar be usurped by the king who wears a crown of thorns. If family, as we know it, stands in the way of the kingdom, let family be transformed into the community that is marked by God's justice, mercy, and compassion. Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother, Jesus says in Matthew. Every institution, every social convention, even family must be open to the changes brought about by the, by the peace that threatens the status quo. As the old hymn puts it, the peace of God, it is no peace, but strife closed in the sod. Ask the, the older brother and that wonderful story about the prodigal son, that story of reconciliation, what he thinks about Jesus kingdom peace he'll tell you that it isn't fair to those who have worked years long and hard to establish their place in life ask the scribes and Pharisees what they think of kingdom peace they'll tell you you can't have religion without rules and when rules are broken there must be consequences ask the laborers in the vineyard in another story the ones who worked all day, what they think of kingdom peace, they will tell you that generosity sounds great in theory, but in practice, it makes them feel as though they have been robbed. To follow Jesus is to be called to rethink the givens, to reimagine the world as it is, and to dream of a world that God is bringing forth through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In order to do that, we have to reimagine the meaning of all sorts of institutions, of family, of marriage, of government, of true peace. From the very beginning of the Christian story, some have welcomed this reimagining and some have rejected it. Even now, the good news of Jesus Christ gener generates both rejoicing and rejection. So here is a rough gospel rule of thumb. If your commitment to any social institution, be it marriage or family or government, is not open to the scrutiny of Jesus' presence, then you are not following him. If the primary role that Jesus plays in your life is to reinforce what you already think, then you are moving away from, not toward, 
the kingdom of God. What does that kingdom, that kingdom peace, look like? Well, there are all sorts of glimpses, especially in the parables of Jesus. But these are not the only signs of kingdom peace the Spirit provides. A group of young people holed up in the state capitol these past 30 days, right up until last Thursday, provide another example. They're called the Dream Defenders, and those of us who have ears to hear and eyes to see should be paying attention to them. The Dream Defenders are saying that you and I should not be living in gated communities, afraid of our own shadows and afraid of young men dressed in hoodies. They're saying that the legislature should not embolden armed bullies to harass and kill in the name of stand your ground. They're saying that kids who get in trouble at school shouldn't be fast-tracked into the criminal justice system. They're saying there is a day which is arriving when you and I will come to our senses and realize we're moving away from, not toward, God's best hopes for us. The dream defender's dream offends, just as the gospel offends. Their dream is not the gospel, but it resonates with the gospel. And if you'd spend some time with those young folks down at the Capitol in this last month or so and seen who they are, you would have seen that they look a lot more like the kingdom of God envisioned in Scripture than many congregations in Tallahassee worshiping at this hour, including ours. The peace that you and I are called to seek is not the peace of stand your ground, but kingdom peace. This kind of peace brings conflict because it beckons us out of our comfort zones. But it is the only peace that truly sets us free to love, neighbor, and serve the triune God. The peace of God, it is no peace, but strife closed in the sod. Now family, pray for just one thing, the marvelous peace of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.